So guys, the only downfall with the semi-live videos we do throughout the fall is we don't have a lot of time to do extra information on these deer we're hunting. So today we're gonna to be talking about when I first saw barbed wire, how many years I was after them, the stuff that led up to it in the 2016 season, and then how we prepared for 2017 season. So five years ago, I had a buck. I, I named barbed wire because he had kickers off his G2s. And he was always around, and at three and a half, he was even better. And four, he disappeared. I didn't know what happened to him. And then two years ago, 2016 season, a deer showed back up. And I wasn't really sure which deer it was, but it, I was thinking it was barbed wire again. So I called this deer barbed wire. Not 100% sure it's him, but he grew a lot. And this is the rack he was sporting. The other side had a big split and had him quite a few times on trail videos. Well, I didn't shoot him in November, and then I started hunting another farm, so I kind of left that farm alone. Well, I checked cameras later that year, and man, I should have been after that deer because he was all over the place. He took over my farm. And he was fighting another buck on a tree that I should have hunted on Thanksgiving. We got really cool pictures of that day. The end of the year, I wanted to go shed hunt, and sure enough, I go in there March 1st, and I'm looking for these antlers, and he's sparring with five other bucks. There's probably 15 bucks in the group. And I have some shaky video and you'll see that. And it's like five degrees. I was a mess. So we got a cool video though. Two weeks later, me and Tim were walking through the woods. I'm telling Tim, make sure you're looking for a dark antler. It's not gonna be like sticking out like a sore thumb. And while I'm telling him that, I'm, I look at his antler on the ground and we run up there and grab it. And that was the start of our preparation for the 17 season. So one thing we noticed when I found the shed is he took a chunk of bone off with this shed. So like, like before, he was probably sparring with other bucks and just popped this antler off a little bit too soon. And with that chunk of bone, it's coincidence that it's the exact same spot where he blew up this extra double main beam. It's right there, exact same spot. So. I'm, I'm kind of glad that he broke that off the way he did. He took it off a little bit too early and took that chunk of bone off. I just can't, can't believe how much he grew there. So fast forward to 2017. I'm working my butt off at the fire department. I worked probably 30, 48s, a bunch of 72s, a couple 96 hour shifts because I wanted two full months off. So I got the cameras out early September. I didn't check them. I knew barbed wire was there. And sure enough, the first day I hunted, So when that four-year-old eight-pointer come through and he was all bristled up, he actually snort wheezed. It was so cool to see that deer act so pissed off for, for no reason, it seemed like. But when he walked through that scrape, I was like, man, he just, he should have hit that scrape. And I turned around and I saw barbed wire standing there. He was probably 60 yards away across this little slough and he was panting, he was, he was tired. He, was, he just fought that other buck and that's why he was so mad. I'm trying to get on him, video shaky, and then I finally figure out where he's gonna be, and I go to full draw, and the camera starts dipping. And so you can probably hear in the video the squeaky of my rubber gloves that I always wear, my nitride gloves, so I don't put scent on anything. I have to grab the camera arm with my bow hand and pick the camera arm back up to get the camera back on him before I shoot him. And thankfully he took a few more steps. I did that. And I always try to stay away from that shoulder blade and I drifted off just a little bit, I guess, shot him through liver and he ran 40, 50 yards off and started stumbling and went down right there. It, it was crazy the, the amount of mo emotions going through me right there. It's unbelievable. So guys, what I hope you take away from this hunt, because I know I did, if you learn a deer's travel patterns where he feels comfortable traveling during daylight hours, use those trail cameras, figure that out, 
hang a couple tree stands where you can get in and out without spooking all those does. Wait till the right day in late October and with a little bit of luck, it might pay off. I know it did for me.